Hey guys, welcome back to a brand new video, and today we're going to be talking about the 2020 Senate map, and how I think it's going to turn out. So, um, before we start this video, at the time of this recording, I'm currently at 602 subscribers. Can we get to, uh, 700 by September 10th? I do believe we can, so, uh, now without further ado, I'm going to start this. Filling out our safe states, Oregon is going to be safe. You know, the Republicans, they're running, uh, they're, the Republicans are running Joe Ray Perkins, who is a conspiracy theorist, uh, and this is already a very, very blue state, um, so, you know, the, the, the Republicans didn't exactly have the greatest primary ever, and, you know, it's, it's safe all across the board, so, it's really not a concern for the Democrats. Now, New Mexico, I think they'd have the potential to be likely, if the Republicans had nominated, um, Eliza Martinez, if I can find, uh, here it is, New Mexico, yeah, so they're running Mark Ronchetti, who is a geologist, news anchor dude, but, you know, honestly, Lisa or Eliza Martinez ran, uh, uh, I meant, ge I said geologist, but I meant meteorologist, um, but, the Les Martinez, she had support with the Navajo Nation, and she also was Latina, so she could have made that probably closer than it will be, but, um, that's really just, that's, uh, that's unfortunate because Martinez could have actually made that race interesting. Virginia, Delaware, New Jersey, Massachusetts, Rhode Island, all the normal safe, um, safe Democrat states, um, you know, Virginia, I guess, could be likely, uh, like, but the recent polling there, and by the way, ignore this poll, this is a far right-wing bias poll that has a C-minus rating sampling random voters, uh, so, you know, the best of the best polls are talking about Iowa, so, not Michigan, because at that point, Michigan isn't really that competitive, at, at least in the Senate level, but the recent polls from Virginia put Warner up by 21, which is not, whoops, which is not exactly the best sign for Daniel Gage, so I'm not really worried about this being likely. It'll be safe. You know, Tim Kaine, in 2018, his seat was safe. Um, he won it by, well, he, he won it by 16 or something like that. So, um, yeah. The Republican safe seats, we're gonna go fill out all the normal seats. Not Montana, uh, because of Steve Bullock, the popular governor, running, um, all these seats. But, yeah, those are the safe uh, GOP held seats, you know, Nebraska, uh, is, is probably going to be the most safe out of all of these, like, even safer than Oklahoma, the, the Democrats are running a horrible candidate there, Chris Janicek, so, um, yeah. All right, now we're going to go into states that, that have the potential to actually be competitive. First, Arizona and Colorado are going to be likely, and at this point in time, I don't really see a path to victory for the Republicans in either of these states. I mean, Martha McSally was, <laughs> I mean, the latest polls are putting, or her behind by 19 points, and this isn't a great poll, but if you want to look at the best polls, Kelly sampling registered voters ahead by 12, registered voters by 9. This is actually a very good poll, uh, sampling 2.5 thousand registered voters, Kelly ahead by 3. It's a little generous to make Sally, but again, this is back in March, and as we all know, stuff has gotten a lot worse for Republicans across the board since March, you know. The most recent polls are putting Kelly up. This is easily... Mm, not easily, but this is easily um, the second most flippable race for the Democrats behind. So we're going to talk about next, which is Colorado. Uh, and by the way, for those of you who don't know, Arizona voters just rejected Martha McSally in 2018. She lost to Kirsten Sinema, uh, and she's going to lose again. Colorado, like the polling there is actually better for Cory Gardner than it is for Martha McSally. Uh, Hickenlooper by 9, by 6, by 11, by 18, by 17, so... You know, to be honest, trying to find the best polls, you know, sampling the voters, uh, trying to find the best registered in case there are no, so the polls are kind of bad, but whatever, I mean, every indicator we have shows Colorado is a likely, um, state at this point, and, you know, I'm trying to pull up the 2016 results, it was competitive in 2016, but that was because Gary Johnson was taking away votes from a lot of, uh, Colorado voters who are going to vote for Hillary Clinton. 
uh, whereas, say, in Idaho, he's taking away votes from Trump. So it really depends that, that, that on that, what state you're looking at. And Cory Gardner has literally tied himself to Trump, and he, Trump is not popular at all in Colorado. Uh, so we're going to go fill out these states. Those are all likely states in Illinois. I know everyone's, for some reason, everyone thinks that this seat is safe uh, for the, um, for, I'm trying to find Illinois, um, Illinois, let's, let's go to the race ratings, Illinois, everyone thinks this is safe for some reason, but, but, but like, that's just dumb, because you have a third party in, independent candidate running, Willie Wilson, who ran for mayor of Chicago, and was formerly a Democrat, so he's gonna take away with some Durbin, um, you know, I don't think there's any polling there, um, there, there might actually be because it's a weird race, but pulling him against Wilson, if he's getting 25% of the vote, if he won't get 25% of the vote, but that's just a weird, this is a tough race to analyze, uh, so I'm just gonna go with my gut and say it's gonna be likely, uh, Michigan, you know, this could be lean, but we have to, we have to understand that this same guy, John James, he ran in 2018 and ended up losing to, um, Debbie Stabenow, and Stabenow, she's, Popular, but she's also established. Whereas Peters is not as established as she is, so we're probably going to see a similar margin. I mean, look at the polls that are sampling registered voters. They're putting Peters ahead. Like every single poll has put Peters ahead, except for uh, the, the, the far right wing poll. And this is the best poll: six hundred registered voters, June twenty fifth. Pretty recently, Peters had by ten, and then another good poll put Sabin had by eighteen, which is not exactly uh, great. But, yeah. Minnesota, some people are starting to characterize this as a safe state. But we have to remember that Minnesota is going to be competitive at the presidential level. And Tino Smith isn't going to outperform Joe Biden by that much. So, Minnesota, toss up. That's just a stupid. Who said it was a toss up? RCP. Okay. Minnesota's not a toss up. But, um, you know, it, it's a likely state at this point in time. All right, now we're going to go over to our likely. Republican states, starting with Alaska, and I used to characterize this as lean, but I've kind of lost a lot of hope that Al Gross can flip this seat. I mean, the recent polling, uh, it's their polling in Alaska, they put him ahead by 5, and they put uh, him ahead by 13. This is a better poll, so it's so still somewhat competitive, and I understand, like, like Al Gross has a lot of going for him, he's an independent, uh, Alaskans are fired up, like, thousands of, tens of thousands of the Senate position to recall GOP Governor Mike Dunleavy. They're going to turn out against Sullivan. This could be lean, but I'm going to give it uh, to, to them by a likely margin to Sullivan. Uh, next is Kansas, and Roger Marshall's the, the GOP nominee. He beat Kobach and Bob Hamilton. Hamilton really didn't have a chance. It was either going to be Kobach or Marshall. I, I, I was wrong. I did a live stream for that. I was very shocked when Kobach didn't win. I really, really thought uh, that he was going to be the nominee, and that he was going to end up choking the seat and losing to Barbara Bollier. I mean, Bollier is this, is a very strong candidate. She's a former former Republican. She's a uh, very centrist. Um, and it would have been cool to see how she voted in the Senate. Maybe sometimes voting with the GOP, sometimes with the Democrats. Maybe maybe like a better Susan Collins because Susan Collins isn't really that independent anymore. But yeah, now Roger Marshall is going to probably win by eleven points, just barely making it likely. So. Just because of how strong Bollier is, I'll, I'll give her the benefit of the doubt and say that, she, that she'll make this closer than it should be in, in Kansas. Plus the fact that the, that the Democrats ran independent in 2014 against Pat Roberts and lost it by a likely margin. So, Kansas, you know, I'm going to say it's likely. All right, now we're going to go over to Texas, uh, where the polls are not good for MJ Hager. I mean, no, res no disrespect to MJ Hager, but she's no better at work. And she's not going to be able to win this race. I mean, better work. He visited every. Why are they pulling Texas so much? Um, but you know, he visited every single county. And oh, here's a good poll: two point four thousand registered voters. But yeah, that's probably how much corn is going to win by. I mean, they he went to every single county. MJ Hager. It's going to be hard to do in, uh, in 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 the times of the coronavirus. So I understand John Cornyn is a Republican, and the Republicans are losing support nationwide. But he's still going to win in Texas. I mean, he's pretty popular there. So. Um, yeah, and I'm going to fill out the rest of the South, well, not the rest of the South. Uh, also, I forgot to fill out uh, West Virginia as a safe state. Paula Jean Swearingen, um, I think she's a, she's a good, I'm forgetting so much today. 
New Hampshire should be likely. Not much to say about that. Uh, but Paula Jean Swearingen, I think she's a good candidate. Uh, I, I do trust Paula Jean Swearingen. I, I think it'd be cool to see her be a senator from West Virginia, but um, she's a progressive in a place where they only or if the Democrats win, they only elect conservative Democrats. For example, uh, maybe someone like Joe Manchin or Jim Justice ran as a conservative Democrat. He won. So now Mississippi and Alabama. Mississippi just going to be likely because of the margins being weird. Um, Mike Espy is a pretty strong candidate. I mean, he served in the Clinton administration. He has a big name. Um, but the most recent poll puts Hydeson at the head by five. And let's see what the best polls say. Uh, whoa, okay. All right, those are back for 2018. So whatever. As became close in 2018, he made it like a likely more six. I think he lost by eight points, isn't like that? Maybe six points, but I think he'll lose by a bit more, something like ten points this time around. I mean, Cindy Heisman is the incumbent. She's not too popular, but she's not unpopular enough to make this a toss-up race. Now, Alabama, Doug Jones is the incumbent, but the Republicans are running Tommy Tuberville, who isn't exactly the most strong candidate, but you know, uh, he. Really, is I mean Roy Moore literally was a child molester, and he ran there, and he only lost by two percent. So if you have a child molester running against a moderate Democrat, and 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 he, and he loses by only two percent, chances are that moderate Democrat is is is, is going to lose uh, the next time he's up for election. So unfortunately for Doug Jones, he's going to lose. Um, Georgia special, I mean, this is just, Democrats are just, their hopes are fading in Georgia, I mean, special election, trying to find, I mean, also has a chance, but low floor by nine, Purdue by three, low floor by four, Collins by four, uh, low floor, Collins, I mean, I mean, this special election is, is like, formatted against the Democrats, so, I mean, running Raphael Warnock, it would, I mean, they could have run Stacey Abrams and just tried to just make her get 50% of the vote, although this is unlikely. So, they're doing a really bad job in the special election. So, whoa, okay. I, didn't, I don't know how I did that, but I guess that's good because it zooms in on the map. So, all right. <laughs> so, I got a new mouse, and that's probably why I don't understand all the functions, but whatever. So, okay, I, I mean, I guess this works. But South Carolina... I mean, Harrison, people are starting to, to call this a toss-up race. I don't really believe that. I mean, uh, we're, it was RCP, who, who apparently loves to give toss-ups to not toss-up races in 270 to win. So, I mean, I don't, I, I don't, I mean, they give Arizona a toss-up. They give Colorado a toss-up. They give Georgia a toss-up. Iowa a toss-up. Maine a toss-up. Michigan, like, they're just being lazy at this point. I mean, what's the point of uh, saying that you're a characterization firm when you're just going to say everyone's a toss-up? And they, have, and I'm honestly surprised that they don't have um, Texas as a toss-up at this point. Whatever. So, South Carolina, I got kind of sidetracked there from saying toss-up too much. But South Carolina... Um, the recent polling puts Graham ahead by three, by one, by four, by two, by seven. He's, he's not exactly that popular, kind of like Ted Cruz, but the best poll, it's back in February, but the best poll put him ahead by 17. He's not going to win by 17, but he's going to win by something like eight, maybe seven points if Harrison does a good job. And he's doing a good job so far. I, I mean, like, I'm getting Harrison ads, and it, it, he's making it all about beating Lindsey Graham, which is, I think, a good campaign tactic. I mean... Better did the same thing to Ted Cruz, and he came close in a red state, so, yeah. The last likely Republican state we're going to fill out is Kentucky, where Mitch McConnell, uh, he's not too popular there. I mean, he's actually the second most unpopular senator in the United States of America, but um, he's still uh, he's still a, a big name around there in their state. McConnell, I guess they'll vote for him against the Democrat challenger, and Amy McGrath. She's a good candidate. I mean, she's not bad, but she's not exactly the best you can run. I mean, if they ran someone like, I don't know, maybe Andy Bashir or Rocky Adkins, they could have won that seat, but I don't think that they are. 
and Kentucky voters they don't like they don't like McConnell, but they're gonna vote down ballot and say, okay, I guess okay, I guess I'm gonna vote for McConnell. We're gonna do our lean Democrat states now, which are which is Maine, and at this point Maine may could be tilt or likely. I really don't know. This is gonna be a weird race for sure. But Gideon had by five, by five, by eight, and the best polls are literally okay. There are no, but the best polls sampling you know a decent amount, not great. Pretty recently, but Gideon had by five, and that's a, I, and I think she'll win by that much. And registered voter voter polls putting Gideon ahead by eight, by seven, by four. So I understand that Collins has won election many times before, but look, she is she she went from the most popular senator in the United States to, to the most unpopular in a span of a couple years. That says a lot about her and and how close she's losing support. I mean. She really is, is not in a good position for re-election right now, and I would not be surprised if, you know, the Republicans don't turn out for her, the Independents go for Gideon, and the Democrats are not against her. And this is already, this is all going on in a blue state, so this is not exactly looking up, looking for, looking like good news for Gideon. And and again, Maine is a, is a down-ballot state. Montana is not a down-ballot state, for example. Maine is, and that's why I'm so confident that she's going to lose. And putting the Democrats at 50 seats is the state of North Carolina, which is, at this point, a lean seat. I used to say that, uh, that this is going to be the closest center race in 2020, but at this point in time, Cal Cunningham is absolutely crushing Tom Tillis. I mean, the most recent polls have 10, 8, 9, 5, 3. I mean, I mean, he, like Joe Biden, he's running ahead of Joe Biden. And the best poll sampling registered voters, Cunningham plus 9. And I would not be surprised if... This, on election night, yeah, Cunningham wins by, like, six and just slips into likely call. That would be weird. But I'm going to say that Collins, what did I just say, Collins, that Tillis is on the path to defeat by three, four points. And, you know, the Democrats, they won the governor's race there in 2016. And they have didn't have a center race there in 2018. But, you know, I'm confident that Cunningham's going to win this. I'm going over to our lean GOP states, I'm only going to give them one, and that's the state... Of Georgia, the normal election, um, but you know, also is recently has recently been ahead by two, then tied. So the best polls uh, try to look at what, uh, um, what the best polls are saying. Uh, they're putting Purdue ahead by six, and again, this is uh, sampling registered voters, not too many, but they're putting Purdue ahead by six. I think it'll be something like four points for him. Also, is a very strong campaigner. He has a good political future. I think he sh- that if Stacey Abrams doesn't run for governor of Georgia in twenty twenty two. Also, should be next in line for the Democrats. He he'd be the second pick to run. I mean, he ran for this. He ran in the special election for the seventh sixth congressional district back in twenty eighteen against um, Karen Handley, and that that would have been a solid red district before. He was the one who made it competitive instead of losing to McBass win in twenty eighteen. So, um, formerly a solidly GOP district became a Tulsa district because of John Ossoff. And I'm going to give one more state to the Democrats, and that's a t- tilt Montana. And the recent polls in Montana have actually been pretty bad for Steve Bullock, who is the popular governor. I mean, he has had by six, by three. And again, this is a pretty good poll, so why do I not trust it? Well, they're sampling likely voters, and there's not too many of them. Um, plus, plus, generally, Danes is uh, polling behind Trump. And again, Trump, when he's that unpopular in Montana, I mean, this sh- this should not even be competitive. And I get that Steve Bullock is running. But under normal circumstances, even state like Montana, it would be a tilt or lean GOP state. Why? Because D. Bullock is so popular, he handled the coronavirus very well, according to the people of Montana. And I speak with a lot of people from Montana, and they're saying that Bullock's going to win. He has a lot of Republican support. I mean, like, that's why he won two governor's races there on the same ballot that Mitt Romney and Donald Trump carried his state by 20 points. So people saying that he doesn't have a chance because it's a presidential election are wrong. And coincidentally, those same people who are saying Steve Bullock doesn't have a chance are giving Gideon or are, are giving Collins the win in Maine, even though Maine is a down ballot state, whereas Montana is not. Uh, also, remember John Tester? He ran he, 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 right after he, he voted to confirm Brett Kavanaugh literally a month before the election, and still won by a lean margin. So, saying I'm generous to Bullock is just a lie because I will admit I think it'll be cool to see Bullock in the Senate, but. Uh, when we look at the results and all this, Montana has been 
this is a safe seat for the Republicans, then it became a lean seat, now it's a toss-up. Uh, so, yeah. The last seat I'm going to characterize, probably the most toss-up, toss-up seat of them all is Iowa, with Joni Ernst, not too popular, I think she's the fourth most unpopular senator in the U.S. Senate, facing off against Teresa Greenfield. Now, Iowa, the polling does put Teresa Greenfield ahead by three, by two, by four, and the best polls put Ernst ahead, but, um, you know, these are all, I mean, this poll was not as recent, but sampling more voters, so you can weight them however you want. <clears throat> but the most recent polling, sampling registered voters in a thousand likely voters, so you're getting the same result, putting Greenfield ahead. And I understand that that, uh, the, that Greenfield is a decent candidate. I, I mean, she's not the best. But I think that if they really wanted to win, they should have ran Fred Hubble, for example. He did very good in the governor's race, even though he lost, I think. Uh, he's running against an incumbent, popular Republican governor, so, yeah, um, but I'm gonna give Ernst the edge, because polls in Iowa do tend to, uh, to underestimate GOP support there, <clears throat> so it's not exactly the most uh, reliable state for polls that are only putting Democrats ahead by three, so I don't really trust them. Also, we have to remember that the Democrats, I know they won the House, House vote there, but they lost the governor's race, and that could be more significant than the Senate race. could also be than the house races it could also, could also be less significant we don't know yet but i do from the bottom of my heart think that joni Ernst is going to win re-election just barely edging it out over Teresa greenfield okay there we go that's how I, that's what i did uh, okay can i hide this um because i wish there was a way to hide this um that's what it is Alright guys, so thanks for watching this video. Be sure to like and subscribe to my channel. Again, we're currently at 602 subscribers. So, can we get to 700 before September 10th? I think we can. Uh, also, if you would like to donate to my Patreon, there are perks you can get for doing that. And be sure to follow Instagram. I think we're almost at 60 followers. Uh, so, that would be much appreciated if you did that. So, see you all in the next video.